I have made tons of videos about the history of Celtic Football Club. During a meeting in a hall in this very church in 1887, Brother Walfred founded Celtic Football Club. How many times have I mentioned the Lisbon Lions? I vlogged at the Billy McNeil and Jock Steen statues outside of Celtic Park countless times. But how about I take you to the exact location where Celtic lifted the European Cup? Instantly recognisable trophy. It's the greatest prize in club football in Europe, of course, and Celtic have got the great honour I've been able to say that we have been champions of Europe. This is insane. Celtic fans, book a holiday to Lisbon and get down here. Honestly, look at this. I reckon this is around it, you know. This is about where he would have lifted it. The first British team to lift the European Cup and it would have happened right there. Who founded it in that church we were just in earlier on, Brother Walfred. It's one of ticked off the list. It's, one of, yeah. it's a bucket list material. Um, just. The hairs are standing up in the back of my neck yeah. as I speak right now. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's a magical place, isn't it? And it's good that it hasn't changed in all that no, time. No, it hasn't, hasn't at all. But today I'll be making a pilgrimage to the depths of rural Ireland, to a place that every Celtic fan and maybe even British and Irish football fan needs to see in their lifetime. It actually feels really amazing to be finally in a lot of these places within Ireland that I've wanted to come to and vlog in for so long. I've known about this Brother Walfred location for a very long time and I've wanted to come here and make a video about it for a long time as well as a lot of the other clubs that I've actually ended up covering whilst I've been here um, in Ireland and just to be here and see it through my camera is so good and look at this lovely little uh, Irish street here we are currently in County Sligo I'm staying in Sligo I've got a few uh, videos relating to this area coming out I don't know when they're all going to come out I've been filming like two videos a day on some days so I'm just racking up the content I'm going to release it all over the next few days but there's just something I've got to show you up here for people who have seen a lot of my videos before, you'll know that I've made a lot of videos up in the Highlands of Scotland. And when you go to the Highlands of Scotland, the road signs start to become in English and in Gaelic, or Gaelic as it's known in Scotland, I believe. But here as well, look, all around Ireland, the entire country, look, it is in English and Gaelic. So you have uh, train station, Station Treanach. And what about Owen Moore Gales? Gael na and um, ha ha Habane Moor, town centre as well. Look, you can see all the different uh, road signs and names in Gaelic too. Sorry about my pronunciation. I find it hard enough to pronounce English words, let alone um, Gaelic words as well. But um, yeah, it's just incredible to think, of course, the history of Celtic is so linked with Ireland. And then you come over here, you see uh, street signs in Gaelic and stuff like that. And obviously the, uh, the Catholic roots of the club of Celtic. They are a Catholic club made by Brother Walfred to help the Catholic population um, of the late 1800s within Glasgow who were really, really struggling and in a lot of poverty and stuff. But I mean, look at this. This is uh, not far from the area where Brother Walfred grew up. We'll be going to his village in a bit. There's an amazing bust of him. Um, but look at some of these lovely new houses as well. And look, this old Catholic church up here. Let's go check it out. I do believe that this side of the Irish flag just there, I think this is the flag of the Vatican City, if my memory serves me correctly. Obviously where the Pope resides is a huge part of Catholic culture and thus a part of like Celtic football club in a way as well. I know, I know, I know it's a nice church. This church was built time we were in this church, there was going to be a bishop here in Colony, you know. Yep, yep. And then it was, it was a nice sort of place in Balladrine, so he went to Balladrine. So what year was this built then? Uh, 1843. 1843, wow, okay. It took some time to build it, you know. I can imagine, yeah. How long? <laughs> I don't know, I think it was a couple of years. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Well, all, them stone, all them stones have been all cut out and everything, you know. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know all them in there. And That's and the three apostles, yeah? Yeah, he's, he's, he's blind. With the, with the reflection of the light from him, that he is blind to him. Ah, okay. And I think Moses is there, and uh, what if I get <laughs> So Jesus' light is blind in the three apostles, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but he, he, he's, he's, he, he turned as white as, as, as white as, 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 as white as white. Yeah. And it, it's blind to him. See, they're putting up their hands. Yeah. Looking up at him. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs>
And there we go, a little look inside a Catholic church, obviously so big and such a massive part of what makes the culture of this area and the religion and um, the ethos of the people and thus the people that founded uh, Celtic Football Club, Brother Wilfred. This would have been a place, something like this, where he would have come and uh, done all his religious work. I'm sorry, I don't really know a lot of the terminology. Um, but yeah, it would have been around somewhere like this. This church was here in the 1840s is when it was built, but Celtic Football Club were formed in 1888. And of course, Brother Walfred was the creator of Celtic Football Club of 1888. But as I'm just driving along here, I've stumbled upon Ballymote Celtic FC. This is where he's from, Ballymote. And look, even the badge of this football club, look, the Ballymote Celtic soccer camp. So even the badge of this football club, which was formed in 1978, has a picture of Brother Walfred on it right there. Wow, that's incredible. And I think this park here is called Brother Walfred Park. There's a GAA stadium through here as well. Let's, uh, Let's investigate. So it's called Brother Walfred slash Corrin Park. Is Corrin maybe the area that we're in right now? Um, but yeah, this is called Brother Walfred Park. So I think this is probably this like little football stadium here. And like I say, there's a Gaelic football stadium just over there. I'm gonna go and have a look over there in a second because it looks like there's some information. But look at these lovely little dugouts. I take it this is probably a non-league club, but look at it in the green and white. How very Irish. Obviously you think of Celtic and the Catholic roots of the club. And these colours spring to mind instantly, don't they? Here we go, check this out. Look, yeah, this is probably, I take it, the home of Ballymount, Ballymount Celtic FC. And look, even their badge has the founder of Celtic Football Club on. And this is where they must play their games. I know that a lot of the people watching this video today will be Celtic fans, and I really appreciate all the people who follow my videos who may not just be Celtic fans or Rangers fans, and um, they're my probably two most um, popular clubs of supporters who probably have subscribed to this channel, but I know there's a lot of people out there who just love a different football club around the UK, whoever that may be. And I couldn't do these videos without fantastic sponsors like FOCO. Like I always mention when FOCO sponsors my videos, they are officially licensed stuff. Everything on there is legit stuff that you would only find in club shops and again I really couldn't do these journeys into like rural island without the support of fantastic sponsors so please do support the channel by supporting the sponsors go down to that top link in the description box and buy some stuff for yourself some Celtic stuff again there's gonna be a lot of Celtic supporters I guess watching this video I'm absolutely terrible for buying gifts for people um, so if like there's a birthday coming up or something for a friend or a family member then genuinely Foco is probably the best place to go if they're a football fan like I say loads of teams on there loads of national teams go on there check out what stuff they have really really supports my channel thank you very much yeah wow here we go so i thought i was just going to come into ballymote to check out the brother wilfred bust which is a little bit further into the village but this is obviously the village that he is from such a legendary figure not just in scottish football but in the catholic religion within ireland i suppose he's probably one of the most famous sort of religious men within the whole country um, if you consider sort of what he gave the football world um, and obviously the Celtic fans the world over will know him but yeah look here we are now at Brother Walfred Park the home of Ballymote Celtic founded in 1978 I'm not sure what level Ballymote Celtic are if there's any Ballymote Celtic fans watching this video do let me know in the comment section below um, sort of what kind of club they are what level they play at and uh, and what the prospects are for the club maybe we'll see them in the Premier Division one day I don't know with the home of Ballymote Celtic just here next to me. Here we have a GAA stadium. I've driven past tons of these on my uh, journey around Ireland in the last few days. And uh, yeah, just look at the goal. It's like a football goal and a rugby goal, <laughs> like completely mixed. Look at that. You got the football goal on the bottom then, like the rugby posts as well. It's actually quite an emotional little journey this obviously after covid thinking about how much i wanted to get out and make these videos is just um yeah i really appreciate it a lot more and especially how much of celtic i've covered from being at their um lisbon lion european cup winning stadium and making videos about the full history of celtic at the church that they were formed in uh, in glasgow and making videos about jinky johnston and jock steen and all that kind of stuff as well and then just to be here in the village of the founder of celtic and look at that beautiful church there as well and here we go look here's the station Stasian, which must be Gaelic and then look you don't see many signs to founders of football clubs the world over but he's in there somewhere wow here he is he's coming up right now I've wanted to come here for a long time but look there's a Ballymote heritage trail which you can take all around here 
But look, it begins with the main man himself. I have looked at a picture of this online so many times. And here we go, look, we have a whole bit of information about him here too. Let's just check out his statue first. Wow, this is incredible. Look at what it says, 1840 to 1915, a great humanitarian and founding father of Glasgow Celtic Football Club, brother, Wilfred Kerens. Uh, Kerens. There we go, look at him, there he is. So his name was actually Andrew Kerens, and yeah, obviously it says Kerens just down there, brother Wilfred Kerens. His name is Andrew Kerens. And in 1888, or 1887 really, he founded the Celtic Football Club. However, they didn't play their first game until 1888, which is why 1888 is on the badge. Look at that, the Celtic badge behind him there. Wow, this is unbelievable to finally see this. And it's actually a lot bigger um, in person than what I thought it would be. The statue at Celtic Park is like a full statue of his body, whereas this is just a bust. And look at it, it's absolutely massive. And here you go, exactly what I was saying. Andrew Kerens was born in Ballymote on May the 18th, 1840. He grew up during the famine and made it his lifetime ambition to help alleviate hunger and poverty. In 1855, he left for Glasgow where he became interested in charitable work being carried out by the Marist Order. He later joined taking the name Brother Walford. Brother Walford was, born, was a born organizer. His efforts to improve the lot of the poor led him to become involved in arranging exhibition games for charity. Following one such game with Edinburgh Hibernians, he decided that Glasgow should have its own Irish football club. Yes, I've done videos about the history of Hibs before. I've done numerous videos about the history of Celtic, of course. And I always come across the fact that Brother Walfred was inspired by the Catholic team in Edinburgh, Hibs. Hibs are nowhere near as successful as Celtic nowadays from what they've won. It really is no comparison in terms of the trophies, especially in Europe, of course. Um, but if it wasn't for Hibs, we wouldn't have Celtic either. Look, the new club was formally constituted uh, in 1887, like I said. Um, but the name Celtic was chosen to reflect both Irish and Scottish identities. The first game was played in 1888. There you go. Um, that was against Rangers as well. Since the Glasgow Celtic has become, uh, sorry, since then Glasgow Celtic has become one of the most popular and largest supported football clubs in the world. In 1892, Brother Walford was transferred to London, where he carried on his great charitable work among the Irish poor. In 1912, following ill health, he was transferred to Dumfries in the south of Scotland. He died aged 74 in 1915 and is buried in Mount St. Michael Cemetery, Dumfries in Scotland. Maybe I'll have to go there for a video one day soon as well. Brother Walford remains a powerful symbol of Celtic and encapsulates all it represents. And it just says here about the, uh, the memorial being uh, unveiled in 2004 by Celtic chairman and local Celtic legend Sean Fallon. Wasn't he assistant manager? I think he may have unveiled the one at Celtic Park as well. But look, as you can see here, a Celtic legend. It is absolutely fascinating for me to think that in such a small sort of rural local area of Ireland, on the sort of the west of Ireland, that I bet a lot, not a lot of tourists really come to is such a famous, bust of a famous man who I bet not a lot of Celtic fans have sort of maybe even heard of. A lot of the Celtic fans who turn up to Celtic Park every week probably walk past the Brother Walfred statue without much of a second thought. How many actually make the trip here to his village where he was obviously brought up and visit the bust which is now here in his honour. I obviously make a lot of videos about football clubs and when I do look into the history of them, I like to put these graphs on screen to show the context about how they've done over time. And just look at the success of Celtic Football Club. I mean, they have barely ever dipped, you know, below the sort of middle of the top tier of football. After the Second World War, I mean, look at that. Where, where would they finish then? Sixth, maybe lowest. Um, but before that, you can see how many times they've been champions and afterwards as well. And just look at everything from sort of, like the 90s up till now, like it's just unbelievable what a successful football club they are. And they started with such humble roots with Brother Walfred wanting just to alleviate the uh, poverty and the hunger of the poor to now having one of the most successful football clubs in the world. Now, these facts are often subjective, but I did read online that Celtic are one of five clubs in the world to have 100 trophies to their name. Again, these uh, things are subjective because what trophies do you take into account? I often say about this when I talk about these issues is like uh, or these topics is that 
some countries don't have a league cup some countries don't have a super cup or like a a charity cup or like a community shield or whatever um, so again they are often subjective but yes yeah, Celtic it just goes to show what a huge football club they are that they have hundreds of trophies to their name a European Cup as well the biggest club honor you can win and it all started with such humble roots from a man who is from this area that I am in right now at the point of recording this Celtic have 52 league titles 40 Scottish Cups and 20 Scottish League Cups as well as of course the European Cup that they won in 1967 and again the highest achievement of a club team that you can have in like I say club football um, in the world and Celtic didn't just win the European Cup um, like a lot of teams do nowadays throwing money at things I know it was different back in the 60s or whatever but they won it with a team completely made up of local lads um, I believe that the vast majority of the squad came from around 10 miles from Parkhead the fact that yeah a group of basically local lads um, won the European Cup and brought it back to Glasgow is absolutely phenomenal it's not been done again by a Scottish club of course and they were the first British team to win um, the biggest trophy you can win as well so and it's all down of course to brother Walfred the man who created the club if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be talking about this incredible story I wouldn't have been to the Estadio Nacional in Lisbon um, to tell you about the uh, the Lisbon Lions I wouldn't have been to St Mary's Church in Glasgow to tell you about the formation of the club I wouldn't have been to the League Cup final where Celtic played against Hibs the team of course they beat that day was the team that gave them inspiration to start their own club so yeah there's so many incredible intricacies linked to celtic football club it's amazing i bet a lot of celtic fans come here to look oh, at yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, just see look at the bus yeah. I took the last step. yeah she cleaned it up with all the board head yeah. oh okay oh you cleaned yeah. it up yeah. nicely yeah. oh yeah okay yeah. oh it's a lovely yeah. thing to do yeah. Yeah. yeah it's amazing that the creator of such a successful football club is from a small little yeah, village yeah, like this yeah, in yeah, rural yeah. island yeah yeah, yeah. They yeah. didn't even come from the town here, out, out the, about two miles out. Oh, okay, yeah, right, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what his childhood was like then out there, was it? Um, well, he was born around the time of the famine, you see. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, In a proper rural area, and he wasn't oh, from yeah, the town, yeah. it was like oh, from no, no, outside. Was a, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. the farm, the farm, yeah, ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. right. Yeah, it's a Wow, amazing. Yeah. If, you, if you're out that direction, I said that I'm heading for Trouble Quarry. Okay, yeah. And you'll yeah. see like the five crossroads, and you'll see the sign for Temple House go down there about maybe a mile right, or okay. less yeah. and well you won't be able to see the house but it's in there's a two story house and the next gate right in is the where he came from oh yeah, okay yeah. right yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Celtic I think they're about most of the team bar two and then come from a 10 mile radius that's right, the European right, Cup winners, yeah, yeah. yeah. The nineteen sixty seven. Yeah. I was it Archie Gemmel was from Saltcoats. Yeah, he was yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there was one from Motherwell and the rest of them were from Glasgow, weren't they? That's right, yeah. Amazing. You would never get that today. Then Bert, Bertie Owl, he he used to play for uh Berman Mafra. He went into he was in somewhere in the pub and yeah. poured a fibre off the <laughs> up the gaff from never seen it again. <laughs> never saw it again. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he only he had the dementia, he only died last I think. Yeah, he died last year, didn't he? or recently there, there this was year. There six of them left two years ago, but I think that, how many left now? There's only yeah, Craig or Craig. Or there's not many left now, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once the start go on, that's it. Yeah, yeah I remember Bertie going. Old sadly died yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a sad one. He was so loved, uh, wasn't he? Berman on, on the, on the Bromford at that time, he didn't have... You didn't have the YouTuber, you didn't have Yeah, the, yeah. You know yeah, I mean? of course. Lovely just to chat to a couple of locals there about Brother Walford. They were even telling me that some of his family are still in the area. Um, yeah, some of his family obviously still reside here. Um, I'm not sure exactly who or where I can find the Walfred um, family or the Kerrins family, I guess it would be. Um, but yeah, Celtic fans, fans of British football, you have to come and visit things like this. Um, there are statues and things to people all around the country for football related things like this and sculptures, statues, busts, whatever it may be. And I love to investigate them. I'll leave some videos on screen. A few of them will be Celtic related. Maybe the Lisbon Lions one, maybe the full history of Celtic. If you could check one of them out, it'd really, really be great. Um, I'd really appreciate it. It shows YouTube that I've got a good channel if you go from one video to the next. They absolutely love that. Please do hit that like button as well. Please do subscribe. Brother Walford, it's been an absolute honor to check out your hometown and to investigate a little bit more about you today. I've learned a bit about Celtic and I hope you have too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.